climax is near to one of begins his inaugural address in which he fixes nine principles in the at National Presbyterian Church early on the morning of the inauguration day the Eisenhowers followed by members of their official family arrive for private services the vice president elect Richard Nixon and his wife are also present <laughs> A wave of excitement sweeps over the crowd, young and old, as the stewardship of the world's greatest democracy changes hands. Eisenhower takes the oath. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Mike shakes hands with Chief Justice Vinson and retiring President Truman, and in a second is at Mamie's side to kiss her on the cheek. Then returning to the rostrum, his first act after assuming office is to ask humbly that the crowd join him in his own prayer. Eisenhower prays for divine guidance. He has been given a copy of the New Testament by Minister Elson. The historic moment of the inauguration is fast approaching. Eisenhower's next stop is the White House to pick up Mr. Truman. The outgoing president ending the last few minutes of his term and Mrs. Truman and Margaret give the Eisenhowers a warm welcome to their new home. Mr. Truman is now finishing almost 20 years of public service in Washington. With Senator Bridges and Speaker of the House Martin, Ike and Mr. Truman head for the Capitol behind a flying V of policemen. The streets of Washington are filled to overflowing with half a million out-of-towners adding to the excitement. Ahead is the Capitol, half hidden in the fog that covers the city. Beneath the great dome, America's 34th president is to take the oath of office before 125,000 persons. President-elect Eisenhower arrives and slowly makes his way out on the elaborate, specially constructed inaugural platform where Mr. Nixon, President Truman, and other distinguished guests are seated. Every foot of space on Capitol Plaza is jammed with spectators. My friends, before I begin the expression of those thoughts that I deem appropriate uh, to this moment, would you permit me the privilege of uttering a little private prayer of my own? And I ask that you bow your heads. Almighty God, as we stand here at this moment, my associates in the, my future associates in the executive branch of government join me in beseeching that thou wilt make full and complete our dedication to the service of the people in this throng and their fellow citizens everywhere. When the official ceremonies at the Capitol are completed, President and Mrs. Eisenhower prepare to lead the motorcade to the White House reviewing stand, escorted by echelons of motorcycle police. As the procession moves along historic Pennsylvania Avenue, the new president, vigorous and smiling, waves heartily, acknowledging the cheers of thousands upon thousands of enthusiastic, wide-eyed citizens. President Eisenhower, a veteran of many parades, leads the most important one of his life. The entourage drives into the White House grounds, where the president and vice president take their places on the reviewing stand. Before them pass the cadets of West Point, marching in perfect formation. Forty years ago, President Eisenhower, then a cadet at the Military Academy, marched with the West Point contingent in the parade at Woodrow Wilson's inaugural. Battle-clad infantrymen parade the colors of Army and Marine regiments that have fought in Korea. 750,000 spectators watch the awe-inspiring pageant which goes on for hours. Dwight D. Eisenhower, at 62, becomes the 34th President of the United States. 